Hartelijk welkom bij Talent Boven Water, het programma dat inzoomt op het jonge talent dat komt bovendrijven bij het Grachtenfestival. Vandaag bij mij aan tafel pianiste Sofiko Simsieve. Vorig jaar won zij de Grachtenfestivalprijs en dat betekent dat ze dit jaar Artist in Residence is. Sofiko, welkom. It's great to have you here. This year you're artist in residence at the Grachten Festival. But I want to go way back to your first steps in the world of music, uh, Georgia, I believe. Yes, correct. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Tell me. Um, well, I started uh, really quite young, actually. My mom uh, is a piano teacher specialized for young kids. And I was, well, I'm told, of course, I don't remember. But my mom tells me that at age of three, I went to the piano and with two hands together, I started playing Georgian lullaby that she was teaching her pupil for many, many months. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's how it started. Uh, she immediately saw that I had this craving for playing the piano and she really fed it and supported me throughout. How did you feed it with, with what? Of course, giving um, you the time, but yes. Well, she completely she dedicated herself to me. She's been that mother who really completely supports her child, and of course, at the age of three or four, I could not read scores. So we played a little game where she would show me how to play the right hand and how to play the left hand, and my challenge was to put them together. So. It was very fun and game-like. Uh, she never forced you to, to practice? No, I'm, yes, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, be honest, be honest. <laughs> oh, we fought a lot about <laughs> practicing, but not that age. That mm -hmm. age, it was really fun and it seemed very easy. And as a child, what seems easy, uh, you feel really, uh, yeah, you feel attracted to that. If you were to mention just one or two elements of the things you learned in that very early childhood from your mother, and you still practice today in your piano playing, what elements would that be? Um, I think um, I could not point just one or two, but uh, I'm quite sure that technical elements of uh, hand position or the way uh, of playing certain passages, uh, virtuosic passages, I think that's she really helped me from an early age and that's why I did not have too much trouble growing through through teenage years that I really struggled with technical difficulties. Talking about your teenage years, I think somewhere in your teenage years, um, something happened, you came to the Netherlands. Uh, how old were you then? Um, my first visit to the, to the Netherlands was when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. I had just met uh, Maestro Le Marquis. He had heard me at a national competition in Tbilisi and he immediately took interest in me. He thought I was very uh, special, young, talented girl. And uh, he had heard about my um, quite poor situation in Georgia and he really wanted to support me. So first steps were she, uh, he gave me a scholarship, monthly scholarship. Yeah. And then he tried to organize few concerts abroad. So my first trip was when I was 12 years old and I had an opportunity to play four times with uh, orchestra that he conducted. New Symphony at Amsterdam? Uh, no, another? it was uh, a different uh, <laughs> yeah. Italian chamber orchestra. Oh, right, okay. uh, and we played four recitals together and uh, later four recitals together with Nino Gretazze, where I played the first half of the concert and she played the second. So in total of eight concerts, that was quite a grand tour. And I visited Holland, I played in uh, most of the big halls here in uh, Rotterdam, uh, the Doelen, Utrecht, Groningen, and uh, Still Leiden. a teenager, mind you. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. It, was, it was a really big event. I had a big dress that my mom made, and mm -hmm. uh, that was my uh, first real interaction with big halls. And since then, I'm really, uh, I'm always craving to be on stage, on big stages. And uh, yeah, that, that's how it started. And then you settled for the Netherlands. Uh, yes. I. Uh, uh, I think I was 13 years old, first time Maestro Marquis mentioned that maybe it would be a good idea to uh, come and study abroad. It was not specified where, but somewhere in Europe. And I remember I, I had tears in my eyes because I could not uh, 
imagine uh, living with, without my mom and we were we had really strong bond we still do and later together when i discussed with my mom the situation we both thought it was for the best and uh, when i was 15 years old i um, auditioned for amsterdam conservatory and they accepted me uh, for bachelor degree so i was really uh, over the moon and you found uh, in Holland a nice family to stay yes, with. Yes, yes. Uh, through uh, through uh, love, I've met incredible amount of kind people who have supported me through all my studies, and they really believed in my talent and really um, stood by me in good and bad. You talked about Lev. Um, you still visit him and his wife Claire regularly. Yes. Let's have a look. Sopi kon voor het eerst tegenkomen. Wat maakte dat u dacht, zij moet naar Nederland komen? Nou ja, dat is verbonden natuurlijk met de situatie in, in Georgië. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Leven is niet zo makkelijk daar. En ook uh, in muziek. Ze was heel uh, talentierd, de kleine, kleine meid. Maar uh, ze moet natuurlijk ontzettend veel leren nog. En dat was ontzettend belangrijk dat ze komt hier. Bijvoorbeeld, ze kan uh, zien en luisteren naar verschillende concerten en, en uh, contacteren met uh, verschillende muziek. En dan is ze zelf wel onderweg en dan toch komt ze weer hier naar Den Haag terug bij jullie. Natuurlijk, ja. we zijn familie. Ja, nou. Ik bedoel, misschien wel niet in vlees en bloed, maar ja, we zijn familie. Zo voelt het ook echt, tenminste voor mij uh, zeker. Ja, want ho ho hoe voelt het dan? Ja, het is een soort toch dochter van me. Mm -hmm. ja? ja, of course. It, it felt like family because it felt very unconditional. I felt very much that I was given something. It feels kind of like you're, you're your second family. It is, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, without uh, Lav and Claire, who knows, I would be probably still in Georgia and uh, have four kids. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what would happen with my music life. Kijken naar het pianospel van Sofie. Waar kan zij het publiek weer zo mee betoveren? Ik denk met haar, met haar persoonlijkheid. Ja, misschien ben ik bijvoorbeeld, ik weet het niet, maar ik kijk met ontzettend veel plezier naar hoe ze speelt. Ik bedoel, de, de body language is, is, is gewoon prachtig en ze, ze heeft een mooi touché gekregen. Ze, ja. Oh, we are going to the concert. Ik ik kan. Nou. Ik ben een programma. Ik ga naar een Tchaikovsky. Oh, really? Ja. Hoe oud? Een jaar geleden. Oh, no. Ja. Ze heeft gewoon zo'n artistieke talent. Als ze komt spelen, dan zit ze zich heel goed concentreren. En ze gaat ook van het podium. Ja. Ja, dat is waar. Ja. Ze speelt altijd beter. Ja, met publiek. In concert, ja. ja. In de eerste jaren, soms, we hebben ook uh, met elkaar problemen gehad. Weet je, omdat ik was niet tevreden was. Hoe kan, hoe kan jij spelen? Uh, iets zo spelen? Heb jij geen idee? Wat is dat? Ja, maar dat. Daarna met, met jaren is het ontzettend veel veranderd. En nou, ze is volwassen mens. Ik ga niet meer, uh, zeg maar, me bemoeien met... met uh, huh? Je moet zelf dat doen. Ja. Maar ik kan me voorstellen, het geeft vast ook een enorme voldoening. Dat jullie haar hebben kunnen helpen en om te zien hoe ze nu geworden is. Tuurlijk. Ja. Ja. We houden ontzettend veel van haar.
they love you very much. Oh, unconditional love, very much. love, unconditional love, Sofiko. Formative years with Lev and Claire, those mm -hmm. years in, in the Netherlands as well. Yes, we've uh, uh, I, uh, we've had uh, we've experienced a lot together. But Claire always, Claire really feels like mother to me because. Um, Somehow, I think she's very comfortable with me, and I'm very comfortable with her. And there is no barrier of also constructive criticism. But still, I uh, always feel that she supports me a lot. When I when I was doing uh, when I was playing my Dutch classical talent tour, out of eleven concerts, she was there for five of them. So <laughs> it was just listening to the same program over and over in different locations. I, I felt that was very, uh, very special for me. What did you, what did you take with you from from contact with them uh, in those years in Holland? What elements do you consider yourself more Dutch as well? Um, <laughs> um, in a way, yes, yes, definitely. Especially when I go. Back to Georgia, sometimes I have difficulty uh, finding things in common with my uh, peers. And I Such have as? Um, just a uh, priority sometimes. The mentality has changed and um, I, I'm really proud of my country and I see what's good and I'm trying to also show that during my residency here. Um, but still there are certain elements that I don't quite agree and in a way, yes, that's... Uh, and, and you as a person, which character trait can be traced back to uh, living in Holland? In Holland? Any? Yes. Do you have any Dutch character traits now? Uh, I, I think so, yes. I'm very... Um, I can be very uh, direct. Straightforward, yeah. Very straightforward, very uh -huh. honest. Okay. Which I really appreciate because I don't like this uh, two-facedness of a person. and. That's something I, I was really shocked when I arrived here. Something honest uh, Lev Marquis uh, said in, in the footage we mm. just saw is that you uh, play even better when on stage. Mm -hmm. What is the magic of the stage to you? Um, it's the combination of, I think, the adrenaline, a little bit, um, the excitement of being there. And most important, I think that's the moment what we are aiming Mm -hmm. to show ourselves completely because of course in the practice room we play music and we try to perfect it or we try to enjoy it as much as possible but at the end um, every musician I think aims to be on stage who they really are. You don't need any any extra incentive but showing yourself that makes you quite vulnerable as well at the same time yes. doesn't it? Yes well that's that's what I think is most uh, exciting and most yeah, that's uh, to be vulnerable, to be uh, angry, to be uh, happy, all these elements. And that's what makes a really uh, successful concert, to be able to show all these elements. We're going to enjoy a private concert now uh, mm -hmm. from you. Um, what are you going to play? I will play uh, Frühlingstraum from uh, Winterreise, transcription for solo piano. Thank you very much. Ja, terwijl Sofiko naar de vleugel loopt, vertel ik dat we na haar mini-recital uh, gaan tinderen. Ik ga haar wat uh, moeilijke keuzes voorleggen aan de hand van wat beelden. En dan moet zij zeggen of ze het mee eens is of niet.
Okay, so I forgot. We're going to play a Tinder game, and it's all about your spontaneous reaction to what you're going to see on this screen. Exciting. Uh, please share with us your thoughts, and then decide whether you like it or you dislike it. And if you dislike it, swipe to the left, and if you like it very much, go towards the right with your finger on the okay. screen. Okay. Here comes the first image. Oh, <laughs> I should see a very challenging pose. That I'll be practicing tonight. Really? Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's I think uh, I like this because I started working out finally in my first time in my life, and I would aim to be able to do this. It's also I a yoga pose, isn't it? It is yoga. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you meditate? Does it help? Um, I have tried, but I like more active sports. Uh. But still, this pose is a, is a yes. Yes, okay. definitely yes. Swipe to the right. That's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell uh, me, yes? Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce, okay. Um, what can I say? My guilty pleasure. <laughs> it's your guilty pleasure. Um, I just, uh, I think uh, she's a very talented uh, businesswoman. A businesswoman, not a musician. Um, sometimes I do listen to her music, so I cannot... Uh, can you mention when? Um, maybe sometimes uh, with my friends in a club or so. Okay. But it's definitely uh, a yes. With her desire to succeed in life, yes, I should, I would admire her. Okay. Yes. This is, uh, I'm, oh, I have to. I think it's something from Star, Star Trek Wars. or Star Wars, Star Wars. or this Lord Star of Wars. the Rings. I, I haven't, seen, I'm in that 1% of people who have, who hasn't seen any of the science fiction, fantasy Which movies, movies. Did, you, did you see though? Uh, oh, I uh, I love I love to I used to have pate abonnement when really? I lived in. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, movies are a big passion of mine, but not. Uh, I haven't really uh, gotten into the science fiction department. But movies as as a genre it helps you to relax as well. Oh, absolutely, or? yes. So absolutely. so how were your days when you were a student and you had this pate? Oh, um, I I basically lived uh, from home to the conservatory and to the. Pate Muntlein Cinema. It was a triangle in Amsterdam that I kept going almost every day. Wow. Yeah, so I have seen very good quality movies, but also pretty bad that I'm not proud of. But so I should say, I, I, unfortunately, I have to say no. This as a movie, no, but... As, honestly, I haven't seen, so... Um, okay, but as a, as a genre? As, as a genre, a yes, definitely. Okay, I'm not making it very easy for you. So it's going to, either way, it's going to be. I'm gonna say no. Bye bye, Star Wars. Oh wow, where did you find this? No, that that uh, makes me feel more at home. Because this what what do we see here? We see um, um, authentic Georgian uh, choir of men with Georgian instruments and Georgian men Dress? clothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are bullets, and that's very um, <clears throat> nice. All my uh, Dutch friends, when I bring them to Georgia, they love to take these Georgian knives as a souvenirs. <laughs> and they really, uh, they are grown men, but they become little boys with their knives. So, yes. what, is it, what does it stand for, for you? And well, this is, this is how I grew up, uh, and uh, among what kind of singers and dancers these are singers, but they can be also dancers. These knives are used to during Georgian Georgian dancing on stage. And, and no casualties. Uh, <laughs> no, not that I know. They are very, very uh, well prepared and well. Uh, yeah, they they work hard to be able to dance like that without casualties. <laughs> Cello is my uh, second love after piano. If uh, I need to be inspired together with singing, I would listen to cello. Cello is the only instrument that I can stand listening uh, them practice the whole day. I wouldn't mind whatever. Um, any famous mind. or any favorite cellists? Well, uh, my boyfriend's a cellist, so okay. <laughs> um, yes, he's one of my favorites. But you can listen to him all day. <laughs> I, I have to. <laughs> okay. 
But I have, I have many, um, yeah, many great cellists that inspire me. But definitely, yes. Thank you for this very insightful Tinder game. Um, talking about insights, we're going to go back to the moment when uh, it was uh, revealed that you were the winner of the Grachten Festival Prize uh, mm. 2016. Let's have a look. En dan ga ik uh, jullie en u nu voorstellen aan de jury muziekjournalisten uit Nederland die de afgelopen maanden jullie gevolgd hebben. Ik weet geen eens of jullie dat door hadden, maar nu komt het resultaat. Uh, you know, I've been performing really uh, intensely past year and a half, and my goal was always to enjoy music. Er is een ongelooflijk grote diversiteit aan talent en er is een enorm groot niveau aan talent hier op het podium. Dat um, is eigenlijk nauwelijks te bevatten. Wij waren echt overweldigd door, door de, de, de diversiteit vooral en de, en de klasse van de muzici die we hier zien staan. No, when you are performing, if you are performing in that level where you can completely relax, you start to really find different colors in music and try on stage to be more exciting or more adventurous or to just listen more calm and really enjoy the sound that you are making on stage. We moesten natuurlijk een knoop doorhakken en de knoop is doorgehakt en we hebben besloten dat de prijs moet gaan naar Sofico. Sofico Simpson. I can't believe it, you won. Ah, I can't believe it. Sofiko Simseve, the winner of the Grachten Festival Prize 2016. Of course, you know, you have expectations, but you just go and play and enjoy and let people see your hard work and uh, yeah, try to express your soul in your playing. But, you know, you. you I, I never go into the competition with the aim of winning it. But this thing is really a big win for me because to be playing next year so many performances, it's just dream come true. This is my regret it even so many years. No, no, never, never. Even if I'm dead from exhaustion, I will never regret this. This is really bigger than winning a competition. Winning the Grachten Festival Prize last year. Um, you already mentioned it the upcoming concerts uh, organized or planned by you as artists in residence. You're looking forward to them all, of course. Can you already mention a few of them, what you're going to do? What does it mean to be an artist in residence? Yes, this, <clears throat> like I mentioned, this prize was much bigger than winning a one-time prize uh, from a competition because it gave me opportunities to really shape and organize um, um, all the recitals myself together with uh, artistic director. How many demands did you have? Uh, <laughs> I had three most uh, important wishes. Uh, one was to play a solo recital, uh, second to play with an orchestra, and third one was really uh, very close to my heart. I wanted to show the audience uh, in what kind of circumstances I grew up and what kind of uh, singing I was exposed to as a child. So uh, I will uh, have one concert dedicated to Georgia, where Georgian authentic uh, co um, folk ensemble will be uh, coming. In the same kind of dress that we saw at the Tinder session just uh, now? I hope so, yes. With definitely. the swords and the knives. Yes, with okay. the whole package. <laughs> okay. yeah. And uh, yes, and also some of the uh, um, Georgian uh, guitar. Yes. Um, there's another adventure you've been going on or embarking on another adventure. You went to one of the American Ivy League universities, to yes. Yale. Why did you decide to go to Yale? It all started right after my tour from Dutch Classical Talent. I, have, uh, I had participated in Young Pianist Foundation competition and I got into the finals and one of the jury members, Professor Boris Berman, um, Though I, I, I had known him before, that time he approached me after the competition to congratulate me and he suggested that this would be a perfect time for me to go and study with him at Yale School of Music. And what did he have to offer in his lessons? Oh, a lot. Every lesson with him is uh, very inspiring and I learn a lot from each lesson and it's 
I treat it like a competition because each lesson I have to be prepared very well and then it, the piece has to be at a certain level if, for him to be able to help me further develop. High standards. Yes. But Yale has also brought you more than just the challenges in, in Professor Berman's piano classes, uh, hasn't it? Yes, absolutely. I have taken few classes also um, um, outside piano and they have been very academically charged, demanding lots of research, writing papers, um, preparing presentations, and that has been absolutely incredible for me to grow as a musician. How can these academic skills, or the uh, expanding of your academic skills, influence your playing as a pianist, as a musician? Can you explain that? Oh, very. In a <laughs> yes, few words, of course. if possible. <laughs> just, just like we, we have seen the video that Maestro Marquis have mentioned how I used to, for example, play something very well, but in a way I did not really know the background of the piece or the composer. And now in my life, usually before I even start playing the piece, I'm learning everything possible to find out about the piece and the composer and the state of mind the composer was in while composing the certain piece. So my perspective of understanding music completely has changed in this one year. How does your heart and your intellect come together in the piece you're going to play for us now? Well, knowing that the piece uh, I'm playing right now for you is composed in 1933, um, I imagine that Shostakovich's mind was not completely suppressed yet by Soviet regime, and it still has very hopeful, energized, happy feeling to it. Opposite uh, the piece I will play during the residency, which was composed right in the middle of the war, uh, during the war. So we have uh, Shostakovich with still some sunshine Absolutely. in his life. Absolutely, yes. The grand piano is all yours, Sofiko. En terwijl Sofiko naar de vleugel loopt om Shostakovich voor ons te spelen, vertel ik erbij dat dit alweer de laatste aflevering is van de serie Talent boven water van dit jaar. En volgend jaar natuurlijk meer talent van het Grachtenfestival. Tot dan. Thank you.